So let's take a small section of the membrane that we typically find in closing the cells of our body. This is what we're going to get. So let's say this is the outside, this is the inside, and because we have a bilayer membrane, we have two layers, let's call this the outer leaflet that points towards the outside, this the inner leaflet that points towards the cytoplasm. Now, if we take a line and we draw a line that separates the membrane in half like so, we'll see that this side is not the same as this side. These two leaflets are not identical and that implies that the plasma membrane is asymmetric. So the two leaflets, the two sides of the membrane are structurally and functionally not the same. Now, what factors contribute to the asymmetry of the plasma membrane? So we have to consider three things. Number one is there is a difference in the composition of the proteins and lipids and carbohydrates found on the two sides of the membrane. So for instance, in this particular case, we have glycolipids and glycoproteins on this side that we don't find on the other side. And likewise, we have the peripheral protein that we find on this side and don't find on the other side. Number two is we have asymmetry because of the difference in the positioning and the orientation of proteins. For instance, if we look at this transmembrane protein, this is oriented in such a way so that this side only contains the peripheral component protein and not this side. And number three is there's asymmetry as a result of a difference in the enzymatic activities of the two sides. Basically, those reactions that take place on this side of the membrane don't take place on this side and vice versa. For instance, if a protein needs to use ATP molecules, the ATP molecules are only found in the cytoplasm and so that protein component can only interact with the ATP from the cytoplasmic side of the membrane brain as we'll discuss in more detail in just a moment. Now why is asymmetry so prevalent? So every single plasma membrane basically is asymmetric. Why? Well asymmetry is actually crucial for the proper functioning of that membrane. <clears throat> so to see what we mean to demonstrate, let's study the ATP or the sodium potassium ATP pump found in every single cell of our body. So this is what it basically looks like. And what it is, is it's this pump that utilizes ATP molecules to create an electrochemical gradient and it pumps the sodium ions to the outside and the potassium ions to the inside. Now because it uses ATP molecules, ATP molecules are only found in the cytoplasm and what that means is this protein has to be positioned in the proper orientation so that the proper side can actually orient, uh, can actually interact with the ATP molecule. And this has to be positioned in the proper orientation because we want to move the sodium this way and the potassium this way and not in the opposite direction. And so we see that the proper positioning of this protein within the membrane determines its functionality. And this cell as a whole must be able to actually use the ATP and pump these in the proper directionality to basically establish that electrochemical gradient. And, we, and so we see that asymmetry is very important to the functionality of the cell membrane. Now, when we synthesize these proteins in the ribosomes of our cell, these proteins, as well as lipids actually, are placed into the membrane in an asymmetric fashion. So we essentially place these proteins asymmetrically, and so we create this asymmetry in the membrane as a result of the difference in the composition and the positioning and orientation of the proteins. But the question is, how is this asymmetry, how is this asymmetric nature of the membrane actually retained? How is it preserved over time? So what exactly prevents, for instance, these two proteins from actually orient themselves and flipping to the other side? Well, basically, when we discussed flip-flopping, or also known as transverse diffusion, we said that proteins cannot actually rotate 
from one leaflet to the other leaflet. And that's because when they rotate, that is energetically unfavorable. Because the proteins contain extensive hydrophilic, so polar regions, when they rotate, that means the polar regions must interact with the hydrophobic core of the membrane, and that is too energetically unfavorable. The energy is very high for that reaction, and it doesn't actually take place. And so we see that proteins do not flip-flop. They cannot rotate or move from one leaflet to the opposing leaflet. And so we see that this is precisely what prevents the asymmetry from being lost. So the membrane asymmetry is preserved over long periods of time because membrane proteins do not actually rotate from one side of the membrane to the other side of the membrane because this is too energetically unfavorable. Now, in addition, what also retains or preserves the asymmetry of the membrane is the fact that membranes are always constructed from pre-existing membranes. And those pre-existing membranes are always asymmetric. So in the same way that to actually create a cell, we have to begin with the cell. To create a membrane, we have to begin with the membrane. So when we're building our cell membrane, we build it by essentially expanding the pre-existing membrane. And that pre-existing membrane basically was asymmetric to begin with. So we see that in addition, asymmetry is also preserved because membranes always arise and grow and extend from pre-existing membranes, which are asymmetric to begin with. Now, in our discussion here, we said that the difference in the composition of not only the proteins, but also the lipids basically gives this membrane the property of asymmetry. So now let's move on from proteins to lipids. So we know that just like proteins are synthesized and eventually placed into the membrane in an asymmetric fashion, lipids are also synthesized and inserted into the membrane asymmetrically. However, the thing about lipids is, so phospholipids is, they can actually flip-flop. They can actually rotate. And so what that implies is, Unlike the absolute configuration, unlike the absolute asymmetry of the proteins in the membrane that basically do not change because they cannot flip-flop, this asymmetry of the membrane due to the lipids does in fact change over time. It is not absolute because these lipids can actually rotate, can actually flip-flop from one leaflet to the other. So we see that however lipids such as phospholipids can actually flip-flop and therefore the asymmetry of the phospholipids in that membrane does not remain absolute. It changes over time. However, we know that flip-flopping of phospholipids actually takes place very, very slowly because it is also energetically unfavorable. In fact, certain lipids, such as glycolipids, that contain very large components that are polar, cannot actually rotate because of those polar interactions, because these polar interactions will be unstabilized when they interact with that core hydrophobic region. And so, just like proteins, glycolipids cannot actually flip-flop or rotate. Now, nevertheless, we see that lipids such as glycolipids and sphingolipids can and do lead to a symmetry of the membrane. So basically because the flip-flopping process takes place so long, uh, takes place, not so long, but takes place so slow, and because certain lipids like glycolipids cannot actually rotate, we see that lipids also, just like proteins, actually contribute to the asymmetric nature of membranes. In fact, if we study the membranes of red blood cells, we'll see that the outside layer of the red blood cell membrane consists of these two lipids. So these two lipids are found in high proportion on the outside of the membrane, while the inside contains these two lipids in high proportion. So we find sphingomyelin and phosphatidylcholine on the outside, and these two are found predominantly on the inside. So we see that it's not only the proteins, but also 
of the lipids that basically give rise to the asymmetric nature of the phospholipid bilayer membrane.